Today's a good day for one reason and one reason only, new tech. And this particular piece I've kind of been going back and forth on, debating whether or not should I, should I not get it, but I'm getting kind of ahead of myself already. Where are my manners? Welcome to Ready, Set, Review. Let's go. So the tech in question today that I've kind of been going back and forth on whether or not I should or should not get it is actually already sitting on my desk and you may have noticed it, may have not, but in case you didn't, let me point it out. The LaCie One Big Doc 16 terabyte configuration. And I kind of saved you the like, just time of unboxing it. I didn't want to make this an unboxing video because you've seen plenty of those. There are plenty of these on the internet already where people have just opened the box and showed you what's in them. Basically, you're getting the hard drive itself, but then you're also getting the power supply, some foam, and you're getting a supplied Thunderbolt 3 cable because this particular hard drive is the Thunderbolt 3 variant. The only problem is, is that it's a little on the short side, so I went and got a cable of my own which is just a tad bit longer because I needed to run from the hard drive to my monitor. So I wanted a cable that was just going to be one and done. And then I just have this one as a spare for any other Thunderbolt 3 supplies I would need. The Thunderbolt 3 cable I ended up picking up is actually this braided cable, just a smidge longer at 3.3 feet, I think. So it should be about one meter. And it's braided, nylon braids. I'll leave the link in the description in case you're interested in a cable like this, but a little bit more heavy duty and a little bit longer so that way I can make the connection from the hard drive to the monitor. Now that we've talked about what was in the box, let's get to the nitty gritty. The hard drive. So undoubtedly, you've seen hard drives very similar to this for a reason. And that's because LaCie is not only prevalent amongst creatives and professionals, but also people who just want a sleek, very convenient, dependable hard drive solution. This one in particular is the one big dock Thunderbolt 3 16 terabyte configuration. And while 16 terabytes is the highest capacity you can get with this particular drive, it steps down in different variations down to eight terabytes. The other hard drive I was considering is also from Lacy, and that's the two big dock Thunderbolt 3 16 terabyte version. And that particular model goes all the way up to a 28 terabyte capacity and steps down as well to eight terabytes. 28 seemed a little bit high for what I needed and was probably gonna be overkill. This one, 16 terabytes, seemed just like a good Goldilocks middle ground, so I went with that. And one thing that you're gonna notice between the one big dock and the two big dock is that while it does come in a higher capacity, most of the time people are gonna use the two big dock for data redundancy. And that's because this one, being a one big dock, only has one slot on the front for one hard drive, meaning that all 16 terabytes are gonna be stored on the one single hard drive. On the two big dock, you instead get one, two slots for two different hard drives where your capacity is split between the two drives. So if I were to have gone a 16 terabyte on the two big dock, that would have been two eight terabyte hard drives. And the reason for that is because that particular hard drive, while it was Thunderbolt 3 capable, is also a RAID configurable hard drive, meaning that you can get speeds crazy high because of the RAID controller, but you can also use it as a means of data protection or data redundancy. So you could use one drive meant for storing all of your data, and the second hard drive would be used to mirror and back up your data in case something happened to the first one. In my particular case, I'm doing a little bit of a different setup and just needed the storage and archive space of the one big dock. However, being that this is a Thunderbolt 3 dock, just like the two big dock, is helpful for a couple of reasons. One, you can daisy chain a couple devices. We all know that it's been a stable of Thunderbolt 3 devices since the first one came out, like back in, I think 2010, maybe? It's been a while. 280 megabytes is what it's being rated at. We'll do some testing once I've set this up on the desk and run Blackmagic speed tests on it. And we'll probably get a little bit lower than that, but theoretically it's capable of up to 280 megabytes a second. Whereas the two big dock silver is rated up to 490 megabytes a second on RAID 0 configuration. RAID 0, for anyone who's not familiar with the RAID setup or configuration, means that you're not using the drives for data redundancy, but instead using both drives for optimized speed, which is why you're able to get that 490 megabytes a second. If you were to go into the RAID 0 configuration, it would be very similar speeds to what this one is capable of now. 
but that's kind of a, a different video altogether. If you're interested in speed for your workflow and you have a lot of data throughput that you need to do or it just really matters if you're editing off the hard drive, probably want to look into the too big dock and get the RAID configuration of that one. But if storage and archiving is more of your thing, maybe some light editing, this might be your go-to. It is for my setup because I'll be editing off of some external solid state drives and it just ended up working out for me in this particular case. Taking a look at the front, you're gonna notice three different ports to take advantage of. A USB 3 port, a CF card slot, and an SD card slot. And the great thing about those three ports is that they're available on the one big dock as well as the two big dock. And if you're someone like me who's using maybe a laptop as your desktop solution or you have limited ports available to you already, then having those ports available, convenient, at the ready whenever you need them is great so you don't have to plug in an extra accessory or take up one of your existing ports. It's just gonna be ready for you to plug in at any time. And the added bonus of maybe plugging in a USB drive or charging your phone through the USB port. The difference between the two drives, however, isn't gonna be located on the front, but rather on the back. Because if you notice, on the back of this one, we get two Thunderbolt 3 equipped ports, a display 1.4 port, a sleep wake button, and a power port. The difference between this and the two big dock is that the two big dock has an additional port in the form of USB-C 3.1 Gen 1, which is capable of up to five gigabits a second, which is your normal USB 3.0 speeds, which I'm sad this one doesn't come with because that means I have to just route my accessories elsewhere. But what this one does have an advantage of is through the display port. The display port option on the two big dock I believe is only a 1.2 version, which means it only supports up to 4K displays. If you're a creative and you have an 8K display that you want to take advantage of in your workflow, then this DisplayPort 1.4 configuration will support up to 8K displays, at least only one of them. But you will have that option to run that monitor if you choose to get this hard drive. So if you are someone like me who's using a very similar setup with a laptop to power your desktop setup, then you might also want to consider power delivery in your accessory chain. With the one big dock, you are gaining an advantage in the form of power delivery because without any power adapters and just the standard like power that's being supplied to the hard drive, you're getting 45 watts of power to your device. If you daisy chain or use another accessory in the mix, then you are stepping down to 30 watts. But if you decide to plug in your power adapter for your laptop for example, into the Thunderbolt 3 port and then run the rest of your chain through it, you are getting up to 70 watts of supply power, which is good because the two big dock on the other hand only supplies up to 15 watts of power, which if you want to do a one cable solution and not have to have a dedicated power adapter taking up another USB port, then that would be a great option to go through and just do a one cable does all kind of thing. So at this point in the video, you're probably wondering how much are either of these things gonna cost me? And the good thing is that for what you're getting, they're actually not breaking the bank. In the case of the one big dock at the time of this video, it's about $654. In the case of the two big dock, in case you decide to go that route, it's about $200 more at $854. And little known fact, there is another variation of the one big dock that you could opt for, which is a solid state version. In that variation of the hard drive, the max capacity you can get is four terabytes, but you are trading capacity for speed in that case because you're getting up to 2,800 megabytes a second of speed, rated at least. And with the one big dock that I have, max capacity is 16 terabytes and you're getting about 290 megabytes a second through Thunderbolt 3. So it is a little bit of a trade-off because the SSD version is more expensive at about $2,400 if I remember correctly. So it's a trade-off depending on, again, your workflow and what's gonna work best for you. In my case, this is more than enough and it's gonna get me by just fine. One other thing to note is that regardless of whether you go with the one big or two big dock, you are getting the same hard drives in each of the devices. That being Seagate Ironwolf Pro Enterprise Class hard drives. And these drives are especially reputable because they're long lasting, durable, reliable, dependable, overall really great hard drives. The only difference being that if you go with the one big dock, you are getting all that capacity on one hard drive, such as the 16 terabyte, versus the two big dock where the capacity is split between the two drives, so eight and eight to make 16. But other than that, 
that you're getting the same quality of drive either way you go. All right, so taking a little detour and seeing what this hard drive is truly capable of in terms of speed, we're gonna run a quick Blackmagic speed test, which I feel like is just kind of the benchmark anytime you wanna test the speed of a computer or hard drive these days. So we're gonna put the stress at one gigabyte, run it, and it looks like we are maxing out about 207.6 with the write speed, read speed of about 211. Let's go ahead and see if it sustains. And actually, a little bit more. So we're going about 214. Read speeds are about the same ballpark. 212. And keep in mind, Lassie claims a write speed of about 240 megabytes a second. I don't know what their claimed read speed was, but generally write speeds are going to be much lower than read speeds anyway but I wouldn't complain knowing that this drive is going to be used for maybe some mild editing, but mostly archiving. This kind of throughput is totally fine by me. And at least it seems consistent. Let's throw a five gigabyte stress on it. And we're getting very close to the same, just a little over 200 megabytes. So we're at 206 with write speeds, read speeds of 211. And let's see if it sustains once it reruns that test. And just like before, so we're kind of averaging around the 210, 211 mark, I would say, give or take a couple for the write speeds. And then read speeds is also floating around the same point, which keeps it likes that 211 number. And I'm gonna just talk about some final notes on the way out. To bring things to a close, it's really gonna come down to your personal workflow and what's gonna work best for you. So if you want those crazy RAID speeds of 440 megabytes, not 490, like I said earlier, but 440 megabytes a second, then you obviously wanna go with the two big because that's gonna give you the flexibility of speed and RAID configuration. But it is gonna cost you a little bit more because it is a little bit pricier than the one big version. However, if the speed isn't so much of a necessity for your workflow and you have other options to work off of or edit off of in the form of maybe solid state like I'm using with my external hard drives, then the one big dock is gonna cover your needs in the sense that it still has docking capabilities, you have Thunderbolt 3, and you have enterprise class hard drives still running in its veins. So if you are someone who really wants those crazy speeds and doesn't really care so much about the capacity of your drives, then you can opt in for the SSD version of this hard drive it is gonna cost you about four times as much, but you are also gonna get a couple of extra card slots on the front in the form of CFast 2.0 and CF Express. But if those don't really matter to you and you just want a dependable drive, one big or two big is gonna be your go. So in the end, I hope that this video helped at least one other person make a decision as to what hard drive they wanted to pick up. And if you decided that after watching this video, you didn't wanna go with any of the hard drives I mentioned and go a completely different route, then that's fine too, because I'm not affiliated by or endorsed by, sponsored by Seagate or Lassie in any way. I bought this hard drive with my money and all the other hard drives in my collection. So these are just the pros and cons that I came up with and found while I was researching the one big and the two big. And as long as it helped you find something for your workflow, then that's all that matters. So thanks for watching. This is Ready Set Review, and I'll catch you on the next one. Let's go.